Hey guys, what's up? My name's Casey. Thanks for watching my second video of my Achilles heel recovery. Um, this video is weeks three through four. As you saw in my video before, uh, it's weeks one through two. Uh, I had a splint on post-surgery and I had, a beat, had that on for about two and a half weeks. Uh, since my last doctor's visit, as you guys saw in my previous video, that I got my splint removed and finally got to see my foot again for the first time. And now I'm in a walking boot, so everything's been definitely going uphill from here. So in weeks three through four, uh, not much has changed really. Uh, you're just still elevating your foot. So my foot is still currently at this angle, but once I got the splint removed, uh, I was able to move my toes a little bit better. And so now the only thing the doctor recommended me to do is do some toe exercises. So I've been lifting up my toes here and there, trying to get that Achilles heel to be a little bit more flexible. It's still super tight, so you still gotta be really careful. Your incision is still technically recovering. Um, right now, I have some surgery tape that's still remaining on my incision, so the doctor told me do not remove it yourself, let it fall off on its own. So one thing that's been nice is I've been able to shower without putting a trash bag over my knee and my leg. So that's one thing that's been very beneficial is now I can get my foot washed. Uh, you're not supposed to direct the water onto your incision itself, but it's been getting wet. So I haven't been washing it directly on it. So that's one thing about weeks three through four is for me, I was able to wash my leg again because I still had some dried up iodine still remaining in my leg from my surgery. So that was nice getting all of that off. So you're still basically sitting in a handicapped stool or chair, whatever you have in your bathtub or shower. Uh, it's been nice to not needing to tape like a bag around my legs so I didn't have to go through that whole process. It just makes your morning or getting ready for the day a little bit longer. So that's been nice, been having more freedom washing your leg in your shower. So that's been good. The one thing that I got that's been really helpful are these heel wedges that goes in your boot. So it's meant for people that rupture their Achilles. There's four layers normally, so they're stacked up together. It's slanted down, just like how your foot is pointing down at the moment. So when you put your boot on, it's definitely more comfortable to have like those wedges in your boot because that's just been helpful for me, especially when I'm putting a little bit more weight on it now day by day. So what my doctor told me is once I get those heel wedges that I can start putting a little bit more weight on my foot itself, but I still have to have my crutches with me. So when you're standing your crutches, you can put a little bit of weight on it, just kind of learn how to walk again in a way. But for me, my doctor told me I could put a little bit of weight on it. So for me, I was a little intimidated to put any kind of weight on my foot because I'm just afraid of re-injuring it. With those heel wedges, it definitely get, takes away that intimidation and you can feel it's pretty comfortable when you're wearing them. Your foot's already used to it. So when I go to the bathroom, when I'm moving around the house, I kind of use my foot to like kind of like as a walking motion so when i'm starting to so when i start physical therapy again uh i could put a little bit of weight on my foot so i'm kind of training myself to do that so when i first started putting weight on my foot i put about five to ten percent of weight and just kind of just crushed around and just still looked like i was walking but i was still putting all my weight towards my hands on my crutches instead of putting more weight on my achilles tendon because I don't want to re-injure it. I don't want to hurt my foot. I don't want to make this recovery process longer. I want to get through this as fast as I can. So day by day, I've been putting slightly a little bit more weight. Uh, but I would say about three, the first three to four days, I only put like 10% of weight on it. And then later on in the second, in week four, I started to put at least 20% of my weight on it. So it's been challenging at times, learning how to walk again, but it's just part of the process right before you start physical therapy. I start physical therapy next week, so in week six, I will be able to start doing all the physical therapy exercises. Um, honestly, I'm a little intimidated by the physical therapy. Um, I'm excited for it at the same time because it's just the next step to getting this Achilles healed again. And I've just seen so many videos and documentaries of how the physical therapists really stretch out your Achilles and you lay flat on a bed, they see the bending it and there's other exercises, pool exercises, there's some uh, treadmill exercises that you're gonna do as well. I personally don't know exactly what to expect, but these are the videos I've seen. So hopefully if the recovery process gets good once I start physical therapy, but also it's a, also the next step in the right direction. So what's been nice from weeks three through four is I've been a little bit more mobile lately. Uh, I got myself a knee scooter, which has been very beneficial for when I go back to work. Uh, especially when I go grocery shopping, it's been really nice. 
and it's definitely so much better than crutches because I get so much pain in my armpit areas and the part of my hands when I'm putting my weight on my crutches. Um, not a big fan of the crutches. I mean, my hands have just been getting sore by putting most of my weight on the handles part of the crutches. So that's one thing I recommend is get yourself a knee scooter. The one thing I also recommend is when you first get on the knee scooter, you gotta be a little careful. Your leg is a little weak. My calf muscle and my thigh muscle were just, there was no muscle there in general. It was just really weak. So when you put putting weight on, a lot of it is just going on your joints and your bones. So that's like another thing that you have to look out for. When I first practiced getting on it, I kind of like slouched a little bit. It was just a little awkward getting on it, but my thigh muscle got really, really sore after the first day of using it just because your muscle itself is not used to being, uh, your leg right now is not used to having any weight on it. So that's one reason why it might hurt a little bit when you first use the knee scooter. But after a while, you get so used to it. So that's one thing I highly recommend is the knee scooter is definitely better than crutches. Uh, definitely still use the crutches around the house if you have to, it just helps you get around. But anyways, the knee scooter has been very beneficial when I go out in public. So that's one thing I recommend you guys having. So far, my weeks three through four is just been doing a lot of bed rest. I've uh, been getting out to go to work lately. I've been getting myself out of the house. It's just healthier to get yourself out of the house. You don't wanna be cooped up at home. So anyways, guys, that does it for this video. This is weeks three through four. Um, I'm gonna start my physical therapy next week. So anyways, in my next video, you'll see some physical therapy action. It's just the next step to start walking again. So I'm really excited about that. All right, guys, thanks for watching this second video. Please remember to like and subscribe at the bottom. And yeah, guys, we're gonna get through this together. So let's do this. Woo!